Hey, it's Tim, timalwa.com, and do you want to script out your YouTube videos so that you get better engagement and more watch time? Well, then stick around for this video because I'm going to share the same script that my seven-figure mentor shared with me coming up. All right, to walk you through my four-step YouTube video scripting process, I've pulled out a Google document that we're going to walk through together. I use this template every single time I record a video. This is my pre-production process, if you will. Now, before we get into step one of the actual scripting process, there's a few pre-planning steps that I want to quickly cover. Number one is I define what my primary keyword is. This is the keyword that I'm trying to rank for with my YouTube video. I optimize all my videos around search phrases and keywords in order to give myself the best chance of showing up in search results and getting more views, getting more traffic. And then secondly, I write the headline to my video ahead of time. That way I know what, the, what I have to fulfill in the video. What's that big promise, that big idea that I have to bring in my video. It gives me like a compass to strive for. It also is for congruence so that I know the headline uh, that I say in the first five or 10 seconds of my video matches a lot of the times the title that I use for my videos. So now that we got that house cleaning out of the way, or is it housekeeping? I don't know. We're gonna scroll down into step one of the video scripting process, which is the intro. Now my intro is very simple, this can be very short. It's hey, this is Tim from timmalwa.com. So hey, this is my name from my domain. Whatever domain you wanna use, whether it's your blog or website, or it's a squeeze page or a capture page, I like to open my videos like this because I'm building a new YouTube channel and I'm trying to get people to remember my domain name, who I am. That way they start seeing my thumbnails on the side. It, it's just building that, hey, Tim from timalwa.com, if I didn't wanna go learn marketing advice or affiliate marketing, how to build a tribe and how to profit from a small list, Tim from timalwa.com. I wanna ingrain that in people's heads. The second thing that I do is go into the hook. You've probably seen this from other videos if you watch this, but I'm gonna go a little bit more nuanced and dive deep on this. The hook is the promise of value. It's what you're promising to deliver in the video. It's like the big problem that they're facing or the big desired outcome that your viewer wants to achieve. And there's a few different ways that you can dialogue this in your video. And I wrote a few different examples out. For example, number one, you could say, in this video, I'm gonna show you. And you either talk about what the desired outcome is, what the transformational result, if you have a, it's a case study, what the result of that case study was or whatever that main pain point that you're trying to solve. So in this video, I'm gonna show you dot, 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 or another way to phrase it, by the end of this video, you'll know how to. This is called future pacing. You are telling them ahead of time, this is the kind of results that you can expect after, if you finish this video and you watch it to the end. Number three, in this video, you'll discover how to, classic headline formula right there, and you fill in the blank, right? Now, one of my favorite hooks to use, it's a copywriting framework. Now. I haven't mentioned this on the channel before, but I am a full-time copywriter at a marketing agency. So I work on with clients all the time, scripting their videos, writing emails, Facebook ads, web copy, all types of copy. And this is my number one go-to copywriting framework. It's called Problem Agitate Solution. This is where you lead with a problem. And in this example template I have, this video was for how to, do I have to be an expert to enter a niche? So that's the example that we're using for. So what I do is, that is the topic of the video. Do I have to be an expert to enter a niche? But what is, like, what's the problem behind that? You have to think about it for a little bit. Maybe go do some research. Like, what's the underlying problem that people are having with that? With that? What it, how, and how can we agitate it? So I write out a little bit of an intro here in my document. Do you have to be an expert to enter a niche? Maybe you feel like a fraud. Maybe you're suffering from imposter syndrome. What Maybe you're thinking, what value can you offer that someone else hasn't already covered? Why would anyone listen to you, right? So. I started with the topic, that's the hook, but I agitated it, I like dug in. It's like t sticking the knife in and then twisting the knife because emotions, w emotions is what gets people to really engage. So when you can really hit on that hot spot and kind of poke at it, that's a great hook. Or the opposite of this would be go to go into the positive future casting. Like you can flip this instead of going problem agitate, you could go desired outcome transformational benefit that you will receive and you start future pacing. You're gonna be able to get this result and this result. This is how you'll feel, this is how you'll transform. And that's another way to emotionally strike a chord in somebody to make them want to sit and pay attention. So that is the hook. So number one, intro. Number two is hook or a promise of value. I really love that problem agitate hook. Number three is this is where you get into the main content. The main content is just delivering on the promise that you have in your hook, that promise of value. I like to take one or two, sometimes three main points, and then I have like a little sub bullet point for each one. This is 
almost like what you learn in grammar school, right? It's like your three body paragraphs and you need a supporting supporting statement or fact or story for each one. That's kind of how I approach my YouTube videos. So I'll take the, the, the topic number one is like a mindset shift, right? What's the mindset, science, mindset shift you have to have in order to enter a niche, even if you're not an expert? And I go into a few bullet points. I tell a story. They're different, there's different tactics within you know, these, these bullet points that you can execute. You can tell a story, you can use a metaphor, you can use an analogy, you can use a case study, different things like that. Then I go into point number two and I repeat. I go my sub bullet points and I go into point number three. Now it is important to mention that I do not read a script. I should probably should have said in the beginning. I do not read the script. I don't believe in reading a script. I think that strips away a lot of the authenticity, a lot of the emotion, the spontaneity. I like to bullet point my things out and then I hit play. I'll record. Sometimes I can't remember all of this. So what I'll do is I'll just pause the camera and then, or I'll just look down, get my, gather my thoughts and I'll start going again and then I'll edit in post-production that make everything's clean. So just a quick recap, we got number one, intro. Number two is the hook or the promise of value. Number three is the main body content. And that's where you divide it into a couple points, a couple sub points, use storytelling, use examples and analogies, case studies to illustrate and back up those main points. Number four, this is the conclusion. This is the outro. Right now, there's a primary call to action and a secondary call to action. Let me explain what the difference is. A primary call to action is really what you ideally want them to do. The main thing, ideally, this would be to join some kind of email list, maybe it's to subscribe to your channel. It's creating that asset so that you can follow up with them at a later date. I recommend that driving to a capture page or a landing page where you can click an email address and give something away for value in exchange is what should be your primary call to action in most cases. Your secondary call to action can be something of less importance, something like subscribe or leave a comment or like the video. Now, just a heads up, this channel that I'm building right now, I'm trying to win trust with the YouTube algorithm platform. So a lot of my videos, I've been using secondary call to actions as my primary call to action, just because I'm not trying to drive people off page yet. I wanna win trust with YouTube. I wanna make sure that I'm uh, having good signals with the algorithm so they start suggesting my videos more. So my primary call to action has been right now to subscribe, to leave a comment, to thumbs up, to give those honest signals to YouTube. And then, but as I create more and more videos, I will start to have more primary call to actions around, go to this website, go to my website, squeeze page, landing page, et cetera. You know, in the very beginning of my videos, I do say, hey, this is Tim from timmobile.com. So I do call out my domain in case someone wants to go visit it out. But that's how you would end. You'd end some kind of uh, strong conclusion, strong outro, have them do some, take come some time to action. And that is how you script a video. This is directly from a seven figure mentor of mine. He showed me that script and I've sprinkled on some of my own uniqueness on top of this, but that is a winning formula for creating YouTube videos that get results. Go ahead and use it. Let me know if you plan on using the script, what was your favorite part about this breakdown? And if you like the video, I would really appreciate a subscribe. If you, I do three videos a week, so if you wanna be notified when the next one comes out, give me a little subscribe, give me a little comment, shout out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.